My name is Pam Benoit, and I'm welcoming you to Odyssey. You know, as I look out in the audience, I, uh, I know there are members of the Harbor Ridge Chorale out there. And as such, you all sing in a particular vocal range. It, uh, it may be two ranges, so, you know, baritone, tenor, alto, soprano. But you know, there are only about 50 people in the world that can sing in all those ranges. And a counter tenor is someone who sings above the tenor range. And we are delighted to have that type of talent here tonight in Terry Barber. Um, you know, he's, he's sung in many different venues, famous venues, Carnegie Hall. He has uh, performed in Moscow. He's performed in London. And we're lucky enough to have him perform right here. And not only that, but he lives right here in Palm City. Yes, I know. I bet a lot of people didn't know that. <laughs> he didn't have a long commute today. I'm not going to spend a lot of time recapping what you already have in your program, because you can read it, and after all, you're here to hear him, not me. But I did want to point out to you that uh, Terry founded an organization by the name of Artists for a Cause. Uh, it's a Stewart-based, national, uh, nonprofit organization that really takes artists and take, brings them to the community and improves communities by using the artists as a catalyst for really great, great results. At the end of the performance, if you're interested, uh, Terry can certainly answer more of your questions, and I think he talks a little bit about it during the performance. Um, it's important for you to know that we're hoping that he will be able to end his musical part of the presentation and then we'll take questions and answers. After that, it, perhaps some of you notice there's a table set up in the back. He has brought some CDs if you'd like to purchase those and I know he'll be more than happy to autograph them for you. Um, Terry tonight though is bringing entertainment to those of us to say, you know, classical music is fun. In fact, what, his, uh, what he loves to say is, everybody loves classical music. They just don't know it yet. So would you please join me in giving a very warm welcome to Terry Barber. like to present is a medley of famous classical melodies. One written for baritone, one for mezzo-soprano that a man probably shouldn't sing, one for tenor, and one for soprano in French, Italian, and German. This is what I call classical for everyone.
Michael Jackson, Prince, even modern day singers like Adam Levine uses that upper part of his voice quite a bit. But in the classical context, it's important uh, that we have men who can sing in that range. It's a little bit different to our ear because before the classical period, men and women were not allowed to share the stage. And so great composers like Handel, who wrote 42 operas, 29 oratorios, I think, um, wrote a lot of roles for men to sing the parts of men and women. Now some of these men who sang in a really high range did so in what I would call an unnatural way. <laughs> I'm doing it for you in a natural way, and I'm very happy about it. <laughs> Today I will sing for you something in the baritone range, something in the tenor range, uh, mezzo-soprano range, soprano range. I'll sing in German, English, Latin, French, and Italian, although it's sung in 14 languages to date. Um, I think I was sharing with my dinner hosts this evening uh, that Alina and I will perform at the Library of Congress in April uh, for the Russian American Cultural Association, and I'll be singing four arias in Russian for them. <laughs> um, I'm going to actually take some artistic license, don't be mad at me, Pam, and just change the order of the next two songs. Um, this next piece was commissioned by Jacqueline Kennedy for the opening of the Kennedy Center. And it was, so it was the first music heard there. And Bernstein knew that jazz and Hasidic music and, I'm uh, sorry, jazz, Hasidic music, and classical music were the three influences of his style. And you can hear something of each of those in this piece. I love it. The singer is in the process of writing a praise song to God. And you hear him say the words laudate dominum, meaning praise the Lord. He never gets through the whole text. He's kind of noodling. This is a simple song from Bernstein's Mass for baritone. <laughs> Like you like to sing. 
I will sing the Lord a new song to praise him, to bless him, to bless the Lord. I will sing his praises while I live all of my days. Blessed is the man who loves the Lord. Blessed is the man who praises him. lucky to have Alina Kirieva. She and I have toured quite a bit together in the last year. Um, she, there's a reason why she was given a scholarship through her master's degree at Juilliard um, and is now a doctoral candidate at another school. Um, she has great musical ideas and it's really a collaboration uh, and you'll get to hear a wonderful solo piece by her later in the program. Next I want to introduce you to the three main characters from Leonard Bernstein's Candide. Abandoned as a child, Candide is described as poor, simple, innocent, and a bastard. Life gives happiness indeed, mares to ride and books to read. Though of noble birth I'm not, I delight a dream. My lot, though I know distinctive features and I know official father, I love all my fellow creatures and the creatures of each other. Candide is hopelessly in love with Cunegonde, the prettiest and highest born maiden in the land. Maximilian is very sincerely devoted to himself. Life is absolute perfection, as is true of my complexion. Every time I look and see me, 
to write down how we should go about singing in his book, The New Music. So really the, per the person that bel canto, or classical singing, operatic singing, is based off his first writings in 1602. You'll hear uh, a few things in this piece. One is that uh, in the late Renaissance or early Baroque, where this is, at the time that this was written, a singer would have ex been expected to create something in the moment. I, I liken it to jazz. So if, if a jazz singer came out and sang your favorite tune, and they kept singing the same melody over and over, and they weren't doing anything to make it them, their own or embellish it, you would think, they don't really know jazz. Well, that's how musicians were judged in the late Renaissance, early Baroque. Really more Baroque, it became, uh, well, we know about Baroque art, don't we, how ornate it is. Um, but especially in secular music, it was really expected for people to create something. So I'll, I'll play a little bit uh, with the melody. And the singer says, Amaryllis, my beauty, don't you believe my heart's desire that you are my love? 
believe it, and if doubt should strike you, take my arrow, open my chest, and see written on my heart, Amaru.
my mother passed away from lymphoma in December of 2006, she was still in her 50s, and I wanted nothing more than to fight cancer. I, I needed to do something personally, and I had my voice, I had my talent, and I dedicated my first solo album to my mother and gave the proceeds to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and it was through that process that I witnessed both the need for an advocate for artists that wanted to do something to make the world a better place with their talent, but also the power that the arts had to heal communities. Um, I would love to speak with you more. I, I don't want to read a huge speech about artists for our cause, um, but we are using, um, we are helping dancers to feed the poor. We are um, engaging kids at, at more than five schools so far with clubs where they can witness the power that their own talent has for community improvement, taking on issues like health concerns, um, our therapeutic arts programs will have art music therapy and therapeutic performances and art outreaches at places like uh, kid, for kids in at-risk communities, um, for people that have had, experienced a loss uh, through hospice, um, boys and girls clubs, so we're, we're getting really, really involved. The sky's the limit on artists being the creative solution for community improvement, and um, I hope that you'll be interested and come to one of our events. Uh, I had them uh, put, the, put a few things that are coming up. We have um, the best and brightest kids in three different categories, popular music, classical and musical theater that are showing off their talent, the best from our network of, like I said, more than five schools, um, and that's at the Kane Center, and then we have an event at the Lyric in March, which is a big fundraiser that partners um, what I call amateur singers who are really professionals in other industries with some of our stars, people who have toured with Barry Manilow and another Grammy, uh, multi-Grammy winning group and putting them together with an attorney and um, other people for private coaching who just happen to be good singers. So that should be fun and interesting. And then there was one more thing on that. Oh, one of the clubs has their own benefit performance March 1st. It's uh, the second year they're doing it. They decided they wanted to do something about human trafficking. So um, you'll see a mixed performance and um, some visual art for sale that they've created. And, it's just, it's amazing to see what kids are what capable of uh, when, you, when you engage them. So that's my commercial. <laughs> when this film came out in the late 80s, um, I remember it was a beautiful, beautiful movie, the cinematography, um, but also the score by Ennio Morricone. And I fell in love um, with the oboe a lot because of this melody. And then recently when someone decided to add Italian lyrics, I said, ooh, I've got to sing that song. It's about the dream of a perfect world. This is Nella Fantasia. <laughs> Oh, 
we're on schedule, we're on schedule. <laughs> I'm going to keep your clapping to a short, no. <laughs> no. Um, we're on schedule with the clapping and everything. Um, this next piece, it's kind of ironic because the Duke of Mantua is quite what we would call today a player. And here he is singing, saying that women are fickle, la donna e mobile, or women are mobile. You'll all recognize this piece, either from the opera Rigoletto or from a pizza commercial. <laughs> Help me welcome Alina Kirieva. I'm very, very grateful to Terry for letting me show you some of my solo work. The next piece, the Hungarian Rhapsody by Liszt, is a part of my uh, solo piano program called Moving Pictures. It is comprised of the classical pieces which were featured in the cartoons and movies. This Hungarian Rhapsody was featured in about 200 cartoons. Uh, the uh, two or three of them you probably know by memory, Bugs Bunny, Tom and Jerry. When I started playing this piece, I did not realize that I don't have those long ears to play the notes. My fingers don't grow uh, about three feet uh, long suddenly. I don't have other creatures to help me, so um, I am just playing by myself the uh, Hungarian Rhapsody by Liszt.
I'm going to sing two songs for you by Brahms now. And the next one, uh, the first one, I should say, is, well, it's a big metaphor, really. The guy is trying to get the girl to open her door. I, I think he's kind of like the big bad wolf, really. Uh, and she says, oh, no, my mother's told me about guys like you. And then following that, you'll all recognize the second piece. In fact, if you don't, you probably, probably need emergency musical resuscitation. <laughs> Let me just say, this, is, this first song is typically sung by one singer in the same octave, but I've changed the octave so that you could tell when it's the man talking and when it's the woman talking. But Brahms wrote it for one singer in one octave, and I've changed the octaves in the middle. <laughs> guten Abend, mein Schatz, guten Abend, mein Kind. Guten Abend, mein Kind, ich komm aus Lieb zu dir. Ach, mach mir auf die Tür, mach mir auf die Tür. Mach mir auf, mach mir auf, mach mir auf die Tür. Mein Tür ist gestorben, ich lass dich nicht ein. Nobody's asleep out there, are they? I'm not sure if I think yawning is a compliment during that piece or not. Um, but <laughs> okay, this one needs a little introduction. This is Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. Okay. 
my arrangement, of course. Because <laughs> everyone's done it, so you've got to do something different. familiar with the musical Les Miserables, then you probably know this song. It's, there's a point when the main character, Jean Valjean, um, is offering this prayer to God, asking for the safe return of Marius, a young man who's in love with his daughter. The musical was originally written in French, so in my version, the first verse you'll hear in French, and then when I get to the bridge and the second verse I'll repeat, you'll hear the English words that you're used to hearing. I'd like to dedicate this piece to my grandfather. Well, no, I have another piece to dedicate to him later. This one is for, first, people who have, are veterans. Do we have any veterans? Veterans, and especially for um, those families who have lost someone overseas, this is called Bring Him Home.